hello everyone and welcome back to the channel this is still your girl so with subs so we already did and uploaded the part one of this tutorial and this is going to be the sewing aspect of this tutorial okay without wasting time let's begin so we are going to be starting with cutting of our sleeve I just want to show us two ways in which we can achieve the sleeve on the sample dress and you fold your fabric on bias the way you've seen me fold already you should know how to do bias folding by now so just fold your fabric into two and fold again in a triangular form giving you four folds so you go ahead and mark out eight inches from the tip of your triangle which is going to be more like the round sleeve upper round sleeve measurement then you can now measure the length of the sleeve after which you use the elastic gather the top and equally gather the down part but this other method is way simpler all you need is just one yard of your fabric you divide it into two a yard of Ankara fabric is 36 inches you divide it into two you'll be having 18 inches for both sleeve that is 18 for right and 18 for left then you gather it at the top and also gather it at the bottom so we've gone ahead to cut out our 18 inches fabric so what you do next is to fold the edges okay up and down after which you pass in your elastic which will help in making the gathers the elastic will be at the top and equally be at the hem of the sleeve all right so we'll be keeping this aside and move straight to the sewing proper now i've gone ahead to iron my stay on the fabric you can see i've cut out the lining the black piece you are seeing so i'll keep that aside and this is a bra cup a customized bra cup i made i actually made this from the regular bra cup in the market and you can see even this i had to do a kind of diy push-up bra since it's not available in my location so i did this and the video is also available on the channel in case you're interested in knowing how i made that so from the regular cup i was able to achieve this if you want to know how to make this for yourself please leave a comment in the comment section so what we are going to do now is to make cut out the fabric we are going to be using to cover the cup so I have 9 inches by 9 inches of the fabric, 2 of it for both curves. I will equally want the curve to come out as 3 pieces, just as in the picture and in the one, the, already, the customized curve I was making. So I'm folding my fabric into 2, leaving out a gap of 1.5 inches. 1 inch is fine. 1.5 inches is equally okay remember you have a square of 9 by 9 inches okay so you fold in a bit leaving out 1.5 inches so at the top of your fold from the folded end you measure out one inch at the top and one inch at the bottom all right so you now determine the midpoint of your fabric which should be 4.5 with your curved ruler can use your free hand and do this with your curved ruler then you connect making a curve from the midpoint to meet the one inch up and down so you can sew this first or you can cut out first before sewing okay so as you sew you sew with half an inch or quarter of an inch seam allowance as much as would not um let the fabric or the thread come off okay so we'll keep the top and the shorter one aside then the one that is a bit longer will fold into two and make something like a dart kind of shape half inch on the bottom okay and you connect it to the tip so you can go ahead now and sew this down what we are trying to do is just to create an well, let's say illusion three piece kind of cup for this top 
everything is going to be easy you don't need to stress yourself out so much just watch carefully if you have any question you can leave it in the comment section so you fold the shorter one which is longer into two and notch the midpoint then you match it up with the seam with of the two piece okay so just join it together using your quarter of an inch or you use your half inch to sew all right okay once you are done stitching it down you can make some notches just to relax the curved parts a bit then you can iron that out when you're done this is what you should have okay because on the thumbnail we are trying to create an illusion three piece we'll just use a bias to make the lines obvious and prominent so after which you can repeat the same process on the other part of the fabric okay so the shorter part that is the one we divided into two you have to stitch that first so that the longer one will be able to cover the bias at the top that's at the midpoint okay i hope you get that so just stitch it down stitch your bias on both sides you know the bias has two sides so you stitch up and down and this is what we have okay you can see it's now looking like the normal corset you just cut out your three piece but this is it's beautiful okay go ahead and pin it all around after pinning you now take it to your sewing machine and stitch it down okay you're going to stitch from this point to the other side leaving the top so i've gone ahead to stitch that down you can take out your pins and trim out the excess in trimming out the excess you're trimming everything out except for the parts that you did not stitch down okay you just trim it make it equal with the curb okay so these other parts that you're going to be turning with lining you can reduce it to half an inch so the half inch you're leaving out is going to be the same allowance for the turning okay so once you're done you keep this aside and finish up with the other piece so the two cups are now set and are waiting fixing everything looking so real so unlike what we did with the ankara fabric the lining is going to be in two piece and not in three piece okay the lining is inside so we'll just make do with two piece so fold your fabric this time around equal all right you're folding it equal you're not leaving out any 1.5 inch so at the top you mark out your one inch and at the bottom your one inch you mark the midpoint 4.5 you connect it like so then you stitch on the line after stitching you can now trim out the essex so the reason why we are doing this is to create some kind of depth on the lining because you cannot really use a straight fabric to turn it won't come out nice except where you are making pleats that's only time it will look okay but since you're not making any pleats you have to at least make the midpoint or the center of your fabric to be a bit deep to accommodate the shape of the cup so i've gone ahead to match it up right size facing each other then with a half inch seam allowance i left on the ankara already stitched to the cup i'll sew it to the lining following that half inch take the whole of the half inch please so that the top of your cup doesn't look somehow okay so after sewing you can go ahead and trim out the excess use your hemming gum and hem the lining to the cup so that it stays in place right now we are moving straight to joining the pieces of the front so you join the sides of the front to the center piece of the front using half inch seam allowance remember the half inch seam allowance is the one you added from the pattern paper when you were transferring to the fabric for joining so you're taking back the half inch seam allowance now so you join both sides together 
after joining okay so this is what we have i'll go ahead and join the other parts of the front so after joining i realized the basque effect did not really give me what i wanted so i had to trim out a bit remember that the back piece and the front piece at the side should be equal so you're not doing anything on the half length area just coming from the midpoint like you've seen the chalk okay if you want it to be more pointed you can still extend it to the center front but i think this way is fine and if you also want it to be longer okay you can still extend it while cutting on your fabric all right Now we'll be joining the sides of the front and the back together because we want to give it a neat finishing at the end of the day. Okay, so at this point, remember the one and a half inches seam allowance we added when we were drafting the pattern. This is now where you take it out. Okay, we are now doing more like shaping the dress, closing up the dress. So take out the allowance you added if you added two take out the two on this part all right so this is our allowance so i equally joined the other side taking out my sewing allowance now it's time for us to create our boning channels you can see my bias and you can see the channels i've made the chalk lines are the lines where i'll be sewing my bias on so the bias is going to be a case for the bones okay so you just stitch your bias down on both sides as you stitch ensure that the space you are leaving in between the lines the stitch lines or seam lines will be able to enter your bone depending on the size of bone you are using i'm actually using the smallest size 0.25 size of bone okay so these are the channels i've made you can add to the back if you want i'll add to the back later you can add to the back if you want or if you don't want you can leave it that way so these are the channels we've made i've equally joined the lining and um same way or same thing i did with the front is the same thing i did for the back also so we are going to be turning the back the fabric with the lining so do not start stitching from the very starting point of your fabric you can give out or leave out one inch for the zip allowance okay remember we are trying to ascertain neat finishing on this very piece so i'll be stitching every part of the top except the cup area okay when you get to the side seam ensure that your seam lines are matching up just match it up. The size seam should match. All the dots should match very well. The dots on the lining should match the dots on the fabric. That's what I'm trying to say. So you stitch up the armhole. I've stitched the armhole. You can notch so that when you turn, it will be more relaxed. Okay? So you're skipping the cup area. Do not sew, right? You move straight to the center. Okay, so once you're done with the center, you also skip the cup area again and then sew up the sides, the armhole and the sides. Remember, you're not stitching to the end of your fabric. Leave out one inch for the zip. So you go ahead now and flip it over. Take it to your ironing table and iron out the top so it can appear flat. So we are back from ironing and this is what we have everything is now flat okay so this is our armhole you can see i did not stitch up the cup area the boot cup area but every other part was stitched up okay for some of us that of those that have small breasts you can go ahead and add extra cup to this the already made cup if you made the push-up kind of cup you can equally add it that is if you have small breast and just want that area to be full you know but if your breast is um okay sizable just ignore so i eventually did not use it i had to take it out because i don't need it but in case you need it do well to add one all right 
So the next step is to attach our cup to the cup area of our corset blouse. Now you can go ahead, use your pin and pin it around and stitch it down. While stitching, you know you already added half inch on the paper while you were drafting, so stitch on the half inch. When you are done, this is what you should be having. Everything is turning out fine, okay? So our next step now is going to be inserting the under wire. Okay, to fix the under wire, this is the under wire. To fix it, we are going to be using a bias tape to pipe the allowance. On the breast cup area okay so you sew and turn then you stitch again around the okay so this is the difference between when you have the underwire and when you do not add the underwear so the wire is inside okay this is stitching with the bias tape so I'll show us how we can achieve that on this other cup so to create a channel for our underwire, you can trim out the excess if it's too bulky on that area. Just trim out the excess, okay? So use your bias tape and do your normal bias turning. You sew on one side of the bias and you flip it on the other side to make sure it covers the seam allowance around the cup area, as you can see on the other cup piece. At this point, we are going to be fixing the wire. Now the wire, the shorter part of the wire is the part that comes to the center front. Okay, so inside the bias you just turned, there should be an opening which the wire should be able to pass through. So just fixing your wire as I am doing like so. This wire comes in sizes. When you get to the tailoring material shop, can tell them to give you according to the bust cup size you are working with so it doesn't really get to both ends of the cup like from center to the other side okay so you don't get um, confused or start bothering yourself so this is the effect you can see both of them now have the same height it's no longer flat all right now it's time for us to insert our zipper and then we'll fix in our boning into the bias strip we've made or bias channel we've made and close up with bias also. So to insert the zip, I'll be sewing the zip only on the fabric, not on the lining, okay? You know you gave out one inch seam allowance for the zip, so just stitch the zip just on the fabric first and not on the fabric and the lining that's the reason why we left that one inch when we are turning the top part of the dress so you can go ahead now and stitch down your zip now we've stitched the zip to the fabric only just on the Ankara fabric so you open your zip down a bit and then turn with the lining as though you just want to turn your zip allowance if you were to be doing it the other way so you have your zip in between the fabric and the lining so you stitch at the top you can cut off the excess zip from the top after stitching then you go ahead and stitch the lining to the fabric just the same way you do your normal turning of your zip allowance if you're not doing any finishing okay okay now you can go ahead and stitch the lining to the fabric with the zip in between the fabric and the lining you can stitch close to the zip or you can just stitch a bit away from the zip all right so you take it down and do the same thing on the other side so by the time you are done this is what your dress should be looking like this is the front piece okay so we'll go ahead now and insert our bonings and the sleeve and then close up and that will be the end okay so you 
go ahead and insert your bone into the black bias there's an opening at the hem okay so your bone should not get to the waistline you should at least have it shorter by 1.5 inches is best that way one inch to 1.5 inches shorter than the full length of your blouse so you could also use the rigelling bone you can pass it through inside the hole also that is if it will enter okay or you can use the tiny rigelling bone the rigelling bone is the one that is sewable all right so just go ahead and fix your boning later we'll use our bias tape to pipe the hem now at the hemline you can go ahead and use your bias tape to turn you sew the bias to the right and then turn it inwards so the last phase is to fix the sleeve remember how i told you you're going to stitch the zip top and bottom and then pass your elastic which will help form the gathers okay so to attach the the sleeve we are going to be matching the side seam of the sleeve to the side seam of our corset top you can take it just stitch it down by one inch or 1.5 inches and that will be it okay like i said earlier stitch it down by one inch just on the side seam of your top okay so this is the end of the class so thank you so much if you've been with us from the beginning please for you to understand this do well to watch the part one i will leave the link in the description box Okay, so do where to subscribe or so share our videos, leave a comment, like and follow us on Instagram.